Did it take years before you suspected that someone in your life might be a covert narcissist? If so, don't feel bad. That's actually really common because of the nature of the personality disorder and the covert nature of it. Covert really means hidden. And if you've known a covert narcissist, you probably have noticed that a lot of these negative characteristics are often very hidden until you really get to know them. So in today's video, we're going to cover 25 warning signs that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Common Ego Community. My name is Christina, and on this channel, we talk about emotional abuse, its connection with spirituality, and we attempt to answer the question, where do we go from here? In today's video, we're taking a step back and we're looking at the signs that someone might be a covert narcissist. And why is this important? If you're in a relationship with someone who is a covert narcissist, that person cannot easily change. And it is impossible for us to change them. So you might end up in a situation where you feel like you're beating your head up against a wall to make this relationship work, whatever kind of relationship it is. And you keep spending all of your effort, all of your time and effort trying to make this work and it's just not going anywhere. And if you're dealing with a covert narcissist, there are reasons for that. There's really nothing you can do to help someone change if they don't wanna change. So one of the more popular videos on this channel is 11 ways to recognize a covert narcissist. Now this video is gonna be very similar and it is 25 warning signs of covert narcissism, but there are some differences. So if you've seen that one, I suggest you go ahead and watch this one too. Obviously there are more signs because 25 is greater than 11, but the ones I've covered before, I'll be covering in different ways, slightly different ways in this video. So let's get to it. So the first sign that somebody is or might be a covert narcissist is that they're passive aggressive. Now, this is one that a lot of people identify with and I've identified with it too. There have been plenty of times when I've acted in ways that were passive aggressive. So just because somebody is passive aggressive doesn't mean that they're a covert narcissist. But if someone is a covert narcissist, you'll notice that their passive aggressive behavior is their go-to. They are almost always passive aggressive. And that's because they have a lot of pent up aggression. They have a lot of pent up anger and it's gotta come out somewhere, but they don't feel confident enough to actually be aggressive. So it comes out in a passive aggressive way. The second sign you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is this person that you're with loves to play Monday morning quarterback. This person will absolutely loves to tell you what you did wrong after you did it. Now they may or may not tell you what to do first, but they just love being in that position where they can sit on the sidelines and tell somebody else that they've done something wrong. Whereas they're not likely to actually do the things themselves. They don't usually have that kind of drive, but they'll tell you all about how they would have done it if they did. And again, this is something where you might be able to think of a time where you've done this. But the difference here is that with a covert narcissist, it's a devaluation tool and it's used very, very often, especially if you're close to this person. So you know that if you do something, you're going to be criticized afterwards. And I have one little example from my own life. One time it was winter and I slipped on a sheet of ice in a parking lot and it was in the middle of where all, you know, where all the cars drive by and I fell. I was just sitting there <laughs> laid out on the floor. And this person came over to me and before offering me a hand, had to tell me all the ways in which this was my fault and I messed up. Now I wasn't placing any sort of blame. I fell, it was my fault. But it's that kind of superior attitude where they have to make sure you know when you're wrong and they have to make sure that you admit when you're wrong but they will not do the same ever. The third sign that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is that this person is especially argumentative and they probably choose topics that are very polarizing to talk about. 
So, you know, everybody always says you should never bring up politics or religion in mixed company. If you don't know people's views or if you just met somebody, it can create a tense situation if you don't agree. So it's always best to just avoid those things. But it's common for a covert narcissist to cling to these topics. These are gonna be their go-to topics that they're gonna love talking about because they can choose a side and it, it will either be one side or the other. It's not gonna be in the middle. They can tell you that you're wrong about this or that. They can tell you that you're stupid for thinking that. Why? Because there's a group of people behind them who believe the same things. So they can be bold and in ways that they would never do it otherwise, they can choose these topics and they can put you down knowing that they aren't the only ones who feel this way. So if it doesn't go well and they're feeling insecure, they can always retreat back to the people who believe the same things they do. So if you're around a covert narcissist, you may find yourself getting into some heated arguments over politics or religion. And again, if you get into arguments with people over politics or religion, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a covert narcissist, but this is a very common thing for a covert narcissist to do because it kind of gives them an opportunity to show that aggression that they're usually stuffing deep down. So the fourth sign that you're dealing with a covert narcissist is that they feel threatened by confidence. If you're feeling especially good, that's when they're going to devalue you. If you accomplish something big, they might either devalue you for it and kind of downplay it like it's not such a big deal, like, oh, who cares? Or they might change the subject and bring it back around to them or start an argument. Arguments are a great way for covert narcissists to turn conversations back to them. The fifth sign that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is this person is really never happy. Even when you think they should be happy, even when you think they've gotten everything they've wanted, they, they ju they're just not happy. And it kind of leaves you thinking that, that something's missing. It leaves you feeling like something's missing. And if you're in a relationship with this person, or even if it's a parent, you feel like maybe you've done something to make them feel unhappy. This is something that you'll often just see in their eyes or in their facial expressions. Even when things are going their way, they're just not happy. These are the people who are going to find fault in everything and they're going to find a reason not to be happy about something. Well, I got this new car, but it's got this and I didn't realize this and they, they can pick things apart and they're, they're just never truly happy. It's kind of sad, but it is the truth. The sixth sign that you're dealing with a covert narcissist is this person is hypersensitive and you may not see this early on. If you do, it will usually be towards other people. But once you get into a relationship, once that person starts devaluing you, you'll realize that they are hyper, hyper sensitive to things that you may not even realize. I have a video about the narcissistic injury and you know I talk about narcissistic rage in that video and you may find that this person just blows up over something that you didn't even expect was gonna trigger them in any way. Or you may say something in an argument that you think might trigger them a little bit, that might make them a little bit angry, but their reaction goes way beyond anything you could have expected. So with this person, you end up walking on eggshells. The seventh sign that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is they're very dismissive people. And you'll see this especially in a relationship with a romantic partnership with a covert narcissist. They, you don't get the feeling like they ever really want you around. And even sometimes if you do get the feeling like they want you there, you always know they don't need you there. You're waiting for the other shoe to drop. They strongly believe that they don't need you because everyone is replaceable to a narcissist. It creates this feeling kind of like they've always got one foot out the door, like they could leave at any moment. And that is the sad truth. They can leave at any moment and they may. The eighth sign that you're dealing with a covert narcissist is that this person will be extremely judgmental. Now, depending on how covert they are, how insecure they are, they may not be super outwardly judgmental. They may not be sitting there gossiping about other people in front of large groups, but even an insecure narcissist, you will see it in their face. You will see, you will hear it in their tone. 
there's always gonna be that contempt. And it really just all comes down to how they're accepted. So if they're around people who will enjoy them tearing somebody down, they'll do it. But if they're around somebody who's going to maybe try to shame them for doing that, they're gonna keep quiet about it. But that judgment is always there. The ninth sign that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is that they're overly entitled. And we've talked about housework somewhat on this channel and how narcissists almost never do their fair share. Now that could sometimes be a little bit of a laziness, but with a covert narcissist, it's more often because they feel like you should be doing it for whatever reason, whether it's gender roles or whether it has to do with schedules, they'll decide for some reason that it is solely your responsibility to do all the housework. And it's not a discussion. It's just, it's just their expectation. And this bleeds over into so many things. There's entitlement at work where a narcissist may feel that they deserve a promotion when they haven't really done anything. They barely show up for work because they overvalue their contribution to everything. The 10th sign that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is that this person is going to be introverted. And unlike the overt narcissist, the covert narcissist is more of an introvert. And this can be very isolating because it can get in the way of you having a good time and you having your own social life. Because in these situations, a covert narcissist will also guilt or shame you for doing things that they don't want you to do. So the 11th sign that you are dealing with a covert narcissist is that they are so often condescending and superior. Now, again, this is something where it's going to be more obvious with some than with others. I can tell you that I had the pleasure of working with someone who was extremely, extremely condescending and superior, like the epitome of this sign that I'm talking about right now. I never thought this was possible, but this person could say hello in a condescending manner. But not everyone can be that condescending and superior. That is like a, an art form or something. What you'll see most of the time is whenever the narcissist feels that he or she has the upper hand, that he or she knows more than you, or if you happen to be wrong in front of a narcissist, that's when you're gonna see this condescending superior attitude come through. It may also come through if they believe that they're better than you because of their gender or their race or their religion or whatever. So an example having to do with religion is let's say the narcissist is a very religious person and or they have they seem to have this very strong faith and you don't and they may put you down because of it they will very likely act superior to you because they have this faith and so they are good and you are bad the 12th sign that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is that they will idealize and devalue on repeat it's a cycle that repeats itself over and over and over again. And after the devaluation often comes the discard and it may or may not be something that is completely obvious and in your face, like a clean break, like they move out or they kick you out, or it could just be that they're, they act like they're done with you. Maybe if you're in a romantic relationship, they cheat on you and they just don't care how you, how you handle it. So the idealization phase, uh, we often talk about love bombing. That is when they go hard and fast, when they really build you up. And de the devaluation phase is when they tear you down. So they build you up only to tear you down and it happens again and again and again. And this is one of those signs where if you're experiencing this in the relationship, it's a major, major red flag. Relationships should not be on this type of roller coaster, no matter what type of relationship it is. It shouldn't be so tumultuous. And whereas there are a lot of other signs that are more subtle, like say being passive aggressive, where somebody could sometimes be passive aggressive and other times not, this sign, this, this idealization and devaluation, these are things that you're not going to see in any healthy relationship. What we're talking about here really is emotional abuse. And regardless of whether you can come to any conclusion, whether this person is a covert narcissist or not, 
it doesn't really matter. If abuse is present, then it's time to at least reevaluate this relationship and what it means to you. So the 13th sign that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is that this person may have a different public image. And this is something that if you've been with this person for a while, it's probably obvious to you. You know that they're a different person behind closed doors than they are in public. But one way to tell if you're on the fence is think about how this person has treated you and some of the things that they've said to you. If people in their lives, if people close to them who seem to be close to them in their lives would be appalled and would not, would almost not believe, or maybe even not believe at all that this person would say that, then that person has a different public persona than private persona because you know full well and you expect them to say these things because you've been there so many times before. So the 14th sign that you're dealing with a covert narcissist is that this person gaslights constantly. And again, covert narcissists have not cornered the market on gaslighting, but they will always use it. So the gaslighting is often around some sort of lie or something that they're trying to cover up. And it may even come out in something that they said that they deny saying, or something that they did that they deny doing. Even if you saw it with your own two eyes, they'll deny it and question your own sanity, making you question your own sanity if they're successful. And if you wanna know more about gaslighting, I have a video all about it and I'll link to that here. I wanna keep this video kind of concise because we have a lot of things to cover, but I do have other videos that I will link to in the description that will explain some of the things that I'm talking about in greater detail. So check that out if you wanna know more about anything that I'm talking about here. The 15th sign that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is, and this kind of goes hand in hand with some of the other signs with you know just them not being happy people with them being very judgmental they're also very cynical so they don't have a rosy view of the world around them and or of the people in their lives they're distrusting because they know their intentions they know that even if they're not out to actually hurt other people, they know that they're willing to hurt other people to get their own way and that they don't care if they do. If you can imagine that's where you're coming from, then it's hard to think that other people aren't thinking the same things, that other people aren't living in the same way. So when we talk about covert narcissism or narcissism in general, I often talk about empathy because a narcissist will always be lacking in empathy. And that's something that's so, so difficult for us to understand because it's one of those things that, that helps us identify as humans, that we, we care, we care about each other, and that drives our actions. So it's really, really difficult to understand someone not having empathy if you do have empathy. But the reverse must also be true. It must be difficult to understand what it's like to have empathy if you don't. And so a narcissist might assume the worst of you, and they almost always will, they might assume the worst of you and other people just because they know what they're capable of. And they just assume that everyone else is capable of the same things. The 16th sign that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is that they may identify as a victim. And depending on who you're dealing with, it may you may see varying levels of this, but in so many situations, there is some sort of victim story. And it could be a story from childhood, or it could be a story about past relationships, people who have wronged this narcissist. And they will gladly tell you this early on. If it's, if it's a narcissist that you meet in your adult life, it's a, if it's a romantic relationship, they will tell you this very early. And unfortunately for people with compassion and with empathy, this could prevent you from actually leaving. It could help you explain some of the things, some of the behaviors that are unacceptable. And especially for highly sensitive people, it could leave you wanting to help, wanting to fix this person who is clearly broken. But really in general, you're going to find a, a victimized story. This is the type of person who just can't catch a break. They have all the skills, they are entitled to all the things, but they're not getting it for whatever reason. We know the reason. The reason is usually because they don't actually deserve it or because they didn't actually try for it. But 
it'll still come out as this victim story because they don't believe the, the, the truth of the matter. Okay, so the 17th sign that you're dealing with a covert narcissist is that they will twist any of your problems to be about them. And this will come out in all sorts of ways, but it is extremely obvious when you're dealing with some sort of grief or loss. Again, it's so difficult for us to understand someone who doesn't have empathy when you have empathy. So we think we tend to think that certain things are universal. You lose somebody who's important to you and you expect that somebody else who's important to you is going to care. Like that's just, it's just a given until you encounter a narcissist because during these times with a narcissist, things are very different from what you would expect. In these times, they are very likely to start an argument with you because shifting the conversation isn't really gonna be very effective. When you're feeling grief and you need to talk to somebody, you need the emotional support from your partner or your family member, somebody who you care about and you think cares about you, you're not just gonna sweep it under the rug or let them sweep it under the rug. You need to get this stuff out. So they're not gonna be able to just change the subject. So what they will often do is start an argument and then they'll twist and turn that argument until it's about something usually that you've argued about a million times before. So they know exactly what they can say to inflame the situation and to infuriate you. And you're likely to get even more furious because why are you doing this now? Why now? Why I'm dealing with all this stuff. Why are we talking about this? It, it makes no sense. Honestly, you end up feeling like you're in a parallel universe. Like this, this can't be happening. This person can't think that this is an appropriate response to what's happening here. And if they don't start an argument about something that's going on in the moment and twist it back to something bigger, what they're likely to do is to expect something of you. So often with a narcissist, it's sex. They, the worst time possible, they expect something like sex from you or it could be something else. And they will throw an all out tantrum if you don't give them their way. And again, you're sitting there like, how is this appropriate? How is any of this appropriate at this time? Don't you care about my feelings? And unfortunately the answer is no. They're, they lack that empathy component and they just can't care. They really only care about themselves. And again, this happens in so many different ways throughout the relationship, but you may not notice it. When you notice it is when you need their emotional support. And this, this could happen again with grief or when you're sick. I have a video about that too, I'll link to. It's a time when you really just need them and they are not there. Not only are they not there, they're just not there in, in such an unbelievable way. Number 18, a covert narcissist will exploit your vulnerabilities. Now, this is something that any covert narcissist will do. So if you tell them something that you're insecure about, they will use that to devalue you because they know it's going to work. If you tell them something that you're afraid of, they might use it to hurt you. Now, they're not going to do it right away necessarily. So it's not always obvious. I know back when I was dealing with this, I had explained away so many things that were obvious because I just, I didn't believe that this person was hurting me on purpose. But then once I started seeing it from a different perspective, it all became obvious. And those vulnerabilities that I had so freely given up that I had so freely offered were completely used against me. And unfortunately, this is, it's a side effect of having a covert narcissist close to you. Because if you don't know this person is a narcissist, you're going to share things about yourself. It's, it's natural to be vulnerable with the people that you care about. So I'm not saying don't be vulnerable, but if you know that somebody you're dealing with is a covert narcissist, or if you suspect it, be very careful about what you share. Do not share anything that they could use against you because they will. 
The 19th sign that you're dealing with a covert narcissist is this person is very likely to downplay or deny their anger. A covert narcissist is likely to have angry outbursts. You can very, very easily trigger a covert narcissist. There's a lot of anger bubbling up behind the surface and they, they keep it down. They push it down often. But just if you just say the right thing, the wrong thing, whatever, if you say something that triggers them, they completely explode. But here's the thing, the, the anger that they exhibit can also be a trigger when you bring it up later. They don't want to admit that they were that angry. They don't want to admit that they lost their cool. So they'll completely deny it. And this is another form of gaslighting. You know what happened. They might even deny yelling at you while they're yelling at you. And I know if you have been in a relationship with a covert narcissist, I, I'm gonna bet that you've been here. I'm gonna bet that you have been in that situation where someone is actually yelling at you and you say, stop yelling at me. And they say, I'm not yelling. It's kind of funny when, when I think back on it and I'm, I'm glad I'm not in that situation anymore. But the ridiculousness of it all is it's, we've got to see humor in it, right? So the 20th sign that you're dealing with a covert narcissist and this is a very, very, one of like almost the hallmark signs of a covert narcissist. And of course, this isn't diagnostic criteria, but when you're dealing with a covert narcissist, you are often going to see that this person will engage in smear campaigns. They are all about the takedown. And I also wanna point out that not every covert narcissist will do this, but this is really, really very common among covert narcissists. So these will be people who will talk trash about you. And maybe you even think this is your friend. They're not saying anything to your face, but they're talking behind your back. They're saying awful things about you. They may be sharing private things that you shared with them and didn't want anyone else to know. And you may or may not know that they're doing this until it progresses much further. So until somebody else tells you or you start noticing that people are treating you differently and you start to connect the dots. So this is one that you can protect yourself against pretty easily because if you know, you don't have to know if somebody's a covert narcissist, but if you know that they're the type of person who shares things about other people that seem inappropriate or if they talk badly about other people or gossip a lot, you should know that that's not someone to share your secrets with or to really confide in with much of anything. Okay, so number 21, this person is very clearly vengeful. You know not to cross this person. And if you do, you know that they're going to get revenge. They're not gonna let it lie. This is why the smear campaigns are often so successful because there are groups of people who know that it's not so fun to be on this person's bad side. So for the moment, they will participate in taking someone else down because it's not them. For the moment, they can breathe easy that they aren't the ones in the narcissist spotlight. So number 22, this person relies heavily on triangulation. And triangulation is a manipulation tactic that narcissists so often use. And it could be a narcissistic parent who puts one child up on a pedestal and compares the other children to that, to that child. Or it could be a romantic partner who triangulates exes against each other or an ex against a, a current partner. Essentially, they're putting one on a pedestal to devalue the other. And they can also use triangulation to make you feel guilty. They might bring other people into it. Well, this person believes that you're this and this. This person believes that you did this wrong. Instead of saying the thing themselves, they might use another person to kind of pin them against you. So this comes up again in the smear campaign. So number 24, the covert narcissist is very likely to avoid direct responsibility. And this kind of goes back to that Monday morning quarterback thing. So they, don't, they aren't likely to take on a lot of responsibility for themselves. 
but they will be there to tell you that you did wrong if you do take on that responsibility. So this is one of those things that you don't necessarily think of when you think narcissists. You think that they're so confident and they think they can do anything and they might even push themselves into positions where they don't really belong. And that could be true, but the covert narcissist especially is, is more insecure and they are less likely to take those kinds of risks. Now, if it's something that they're completely comfortable with, they might do that. They might try to push for a position of power, but a covert narcissist is much more likely to sit on the sidelines. So the 25th sign that you might be dealing with a covert narcissist is narcissism is the last thing you'd expect. You know something is wrong, you know something's off. You may have discovered that this person really, really struggles with empathy and they are awful to you at times and sometimes they're great. So they go through that that idealization and devaluation. If you are in a relationship with a covert narcissist and don't really know a lot about covert narcissism, the last thing you're going to expect is that the person you're with is a narcissist because they don't fit that stereotypical over grandiose narcissist image. So those are 25 warning signs of covert narcissism. So what do we do with this information? Now, I want to go back a little bit and point out again that not all of these signs are surefire signs that somebody is a narcissist. So there are some that you might even do, but if you know somebody, if somebody close to you exhibits more of these characteristics or warning signs than not, that is a major red flag that something is wrong. Something is really wrong with the relationship. And there's a good chance that you're experiencing emotional abuse. So it's up to you to reevaluate the people in your life and to decide who really you want around you because the people who we let into our lives have a major impact on our overall self-worth and well-being. So like I said, I'm going to link to a couple of videos that you might find helpful. And if you like this video, if you found it helpful at all, please let me know by hitting that like button and I will see you next time.